Hey team, big show today. We're joined by a highly motivated business owner whose respect for the power of marketing is off the charts. Plus, I get on my soapbox in response to a couple of angry listeners. You ready? Yeah, me too. Let's do it. Yeah, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, but you, so much more importantly... You're a motivated business owner and you are ready to crank out some great marketing in order to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. It's exactly what we do around here. If you're new to the show, welcome. Thanks for finding us. Thanks for searching us out. If you're not new, if you're old to the show, thanks for coming back. Love your work. Hey, big show today. Nick May joins us. He owns a painting business in Colorado called Walls by Design. And his respect for marketing, oh, it's big, a lot of love in the room. Plus, I have a controversial, well, we'll call it opinionated update on my upcoming tour, my upcoming outsourcing tour to the Philippines. And I've got a motivational marketing quote that provides a wonderfully simple definition of marketing. Hey, today's show made possible by the good folk at Net Registry. If you're not getting traction with your marketing online, I'd give them a call. I'd drop by to netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo. They will sort you out. Promise. And we're also made possible by the good folk at Audible who have 180,000 audiobooks ready for immediate download and they want to give you a free one. I'm listening to one at the moment that might surprise you. I'll tell you what that is later on. But you can grab your free audiobook right now after this podcast finishes at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. Hey, as per usual, there's marketing gold dripping, yeah, dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser. Or better still, book him. Tim Reid. That's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. Righto, coming up, as I said, we're joined by a wonderful fellow, Nick May, Walls by Design. He simply loves marketing. But first, let me just get up on my soapbox, clear my throat, and are you ready for a bit of an opinion? Good. As many of you know, I'm a big supporter of Australian businesses outsourcing what they can to the Philippines. And of recent times, particularly the last three weeks, I've been promoting this particularly heavily for three reasons. Number one, it works. More on that in a minute. Number two, I'm hosting a business outsourcing tour to Manila in June, and I am looking for some motivated business owners, 10 in fact, to join me. Hey, thanks to those that have already booked their seat, by the way. Well done to you. If you haven't, there's still time. That's all right. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash freedom. You'll see a little video of me explaining all about it. Love to see you on it. We had had a blast last year. Number three, I have an interest, a personal interest, in an outsourcing business in Clark, outside of Manila, called Cornerstone Business Solutions. Why? Because I've seen firsthand the massive and positive impact outsourcing is having on Aussie businesses. Now, as a result of sticking my neck out, I have received some hate mail. Well, let's call it pissed off mail. Hate's a big word, as I often tell my kids. So before I share my stance on this whole Philippines outsourcing thing, allow me to share two of the notes I've received in the past few days. This one's from a listener who's a website designer who unsubscribed recently from my email list. They said, not interested in supporting someone who supports sending jobs overseas because it's cheaper. Goodbye, end quote. And then there's this longer email from a listener who's in audio production, which actually saddens me. Not not the fact that they're in audio production, but just this note. It says, another nail in the coffin. Well, 
shipping everything off to the Philippines won't help me one little bit. It's another nail in what I'm doing. I've seen it in IT day jobs too. In fact, I've just taken one to make ends meet. Recruiters and clients now wanting everything, highly skilled for a lot lower rate. Not to mention the companies I know of that have offshored and now moved back as it was such a bad experience for them. Although that's in a corporate IT field though. But hey, if everyone wants to go to the Philippines and mix master their audio because it's cheap, be my guest. 99% of podcasts and webinars are awful to listen to. Maybe not 99%, but there are some crook ones out there. But the masses don't really care because it's cheap. So who am I to go and bang on about it? I sound like a vinyl lover, don't I? Ho, ho. Oh, I think that might be a bit sarcastic, that ho, ho. It's a worldwide market, though, and everyone is expendable. It's just a matter of time. Most jobs will disappear over the next 20 years. No, they won't. They'll be replaced by others if they do. It's a cycle we are now in. Interesting where society will go. Certainly not ahead, in my honest opinion. And don't mention mortgage repayments in Sydney. My eyes are watering just trying to keep up on where that repayment will come from. Offshoring? Huh, what a great idea. Close quotes on that one. Now, here's the thing, team. In fact, here's seven things. Number one, I'm all for keeping jobs in Australia when it's financially feasible for the business. Number two, I'm not suggesting every business outsource everything to the Philippines, but if you have tasks inside your business that you can put a process around, admin, bookkeeping, data entry, inbound, outbound calling, SEO, social media management, to name a few, then there are huge cost and time efficiencies to be gained. Point three, I'm all for ideas that enable a business to reduce its overheads whilst improving their customers' overall experience. Outsourcing is one of those ideas. It is. Number four, I see all too often how prohibitive it is for small business to pay, say, 180 bucks an hour to have a brochure designed locally or 60 grand per annum for a local telemarketer. So prohibitive that the business owner says, stuff it, I just won't or can't do it. Point five, this means way too many business owners spend 98% of their time working in and not on their business. Only when we work on our business do the big ideas reveal themselves. I see that happen all the time. We need that thinking space. There's never been a better time to run and market a small business in Australia. And point seven, we just need to open our eyes and minds to the new global economy. There's more than enough to go around for everyone here and over there. You see, it's all about mindset. The two pissed off listeners mentioned above are in a tough spot with their current mindset. Change is inevitable. Those who bend or adapt will survive, individuals, companies and nations. I choose to live in an an abundant world where everybody can win. Did you know that in the last 12 months, how's this, there have been more Aussie jobs created and more vacancies than in the last 25 years? According to Trading Economics, Australia's seasonally adjusted unemployment rate fell to 5.7% in March of 2016 from 58 in February and below market consensus of 5.9%. It's the lowest jobless rate since September 2013 as the economy added 26,100 jobs and the number of unemployed decreased by 7,300. Hey, that's abundance. Outsourcing is just one component of our complex global system. If I was a web designer or audio producer, I'd have a team of Filipinos on the tools five days a week, coding, editing, designing, providing customer support. Filipinos are great at customer support. Freeing me up to chase business, do the deals, think more strategically. I don't think any of us spend enough time thinking, by the way, and enjoy my newfound business and personal freedom. You know, you can bitch about it all you like and call doomsday all you like, or join the growing band of motivated business owners and help Australia become internationally competitive 
for the good of all Australian communities. Now, if you're now feeling inspired to take this leap, then join me, team, in the Philippines this June. Or maybe you just want to start your outsourcing journey now. Ripper! Simply head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash freedom. And now, if you'll allow me to get off my soapbox, let's get on with the show. All right. Hey, there you go. Big breath. Let's get stuck into today's guest. Truly motivated business owner. This is Nick May. He owns a company in Colorado. It's a painting company called Walls by Design. He employs artists to paint people's homes, like the walls and interiors and the exteriors of people's homes. Uh, I love the tagline, painters by trade, artists at heart. Now, also, Nick has a podcast called The Chase Lounge, which aims to help interior designers grow their businesses. And guess who some of Nick's biggest clients are? Yeah, you guessed it, interior designers. And now he's embarking on the speaking service. Service. Well, it is a service, but it is a speaking circuit as well. What I love about Nick, long-time listener of the show, like long time, years and years. Thanks, Nico. Great forum contributor, but more importantly... He has a huge respect for the power of marketing. Now, Nick's the 309th motivated business owner I have interviewed, and one thing links them all, and it is their respect for marketing. We can't respect it enough because at the end of the day, it can grow our business. Now, I started off by asking Nick to share something unusual about himself. I guess the fact that my wife fixes everything around our house and I decorate. (laughs) Right. Okay. So that's your role reversal there, right there. Absolutely. How'd that come about? You know, my wife is, she's brilliant. She's an engineer, semi-photographic memory, and I'm just creative and have always been creative. I don't, uh, I don't claim to be an artist, even though I talk about that with my business a lot. I am just creative and I, and I'm a problem solver and, I'm just, that's the world I live in. You know, T- tell me about creativity because here's the thing. I, I, I grew up in an advertising agency where there was a creative department and I wasn't in it, right? So for me, those people over there were the creative ones and I wasn't allowed to be. And that annoyed the hell out of me. And I also think there's a lot of business owners who don't think they're creative uh, and I think that affects their marketing. How does one be creative? You know, it's not a real Zen thing, <laughs> Tim. I, I, I just, I, I always look at things from probably a different perspective. You know, people talk about being in the box versus out of the box, but I've never really been in the box mm-hmm. much, and I've always had to figure out things myself. Even, you know, I run a painting business, and I would, most people that go and start a business, they like worked for somebody else. Like you were in advertising and you mm-hmm. worked for a big corporate and then you took that and all the things that you've learned. And, and I escaped. You, you escaped, exactly. <laughs> and then went off on your own and, and yeah. now you're this huge personality that helps wow. millions of people in, millions. Their, in their marketing. Yeah. Well, I never went and worked for somebody else in painting. I just... Right. I just started painting and I figured Mm. out things that did work and things that didn't work. And I've learned a lot of things the hard way. And so I I come at most things in life like that. I just look at it from my perspective and I go, well, that doesn't make sense to me. And that's, to be honest, that's what drove me crazy when I was in corporate America. And Mm -hmm. I was um, a cube, what do you call them? Cube a cubi- esca- well, a cubicle escapee is what you became, but at a right. point in time you were trapped in a cubicle. Right. What was the cubicle? What were you uh, doing? I lived in, you know, I worked in the cube before I started my painting business. Doing what? I was inside sales. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> so I lived in cube land yeah. and every day I would go to work yeah. and would think, what the hell am I going to do the rest of my life? <laughs> And then in walked small business and you've never looked back. That's right. you got to love that, don't you? So creativity um, is something, I think it, it sounds like you define it as problem solving, yeah, as opposed to um, being wacky, right? which I think some people look at it as being. Yes. Cool. It's an interesting way of looking at it. How can I do things differently for a commercial result, yeah? Yeah, and I guess I don't really think of it as, oh, I've got to do things different. Like I don't come 
just to do things different. Yeah. I just look at things and say, well, that doesn't make sense to me. Why, did, why would you do it that way? Yep. I, this makes more sense to me. Yeah, love it. Love it. I, I think we do that enough. Right. Hey, now, Nick, you are one of these motivated business owners that, from my observations, see marketing as a hobby. You, you really – you have a, a genuine passion for marketing. What, what do you love about it? You know, I've always been a small business junkie. When people mm. would ask me, what are your hobbies? And I would say, well, I play soccer, but, you know, I love reading business books. I love hearing business stories. Yep. You know, the only television show I watch is The Profit, which I don't even know if you guys have down there in Australia. No. Well, maybe we do. We haven't heard of it, but nice. And so it's always about business. And so I've really turned – the marketing aspect of my business into a hobby in the fact that I love doing it. You know, if you have a hobby, you spend time doing it just because you love to do it. And so I'm always trying to learn about what other people are doing. I listen to lots of podcasts, you know, probably thanks to you. After I found yours, then mm -hmm. I went looking for others and, and have listened to lots of did, podcasts. Did, did, just to stop, the, you, you stick, you stuck with mine. I'm sorry? You're stuck with mine, right? Oh, you, yeah. You went and found others, well, but you, you know, have... once in a while. Yeah, yeah, okay. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> You're right. Okay, thanks. Um, I love it, mate. So you've just all, uh, uh, the big point there for me is that you don't watch TV. You don't waste time. And this is kind of Gary Vaynerchuk type stuff. Listeners, this social media guy that kind of is everywhere. I mean, he says, you know, if you want to, if, if this Saturday you want to sit down and watch the entire series of Game of Thrones, then go and do it. But that will be at the expense of growing your business, you know. Right. Which I think there's a bit of a balance there. But I do think we all spend a bit too much time consuming stuff we don't need to. Yeah, I think you have to turn it off and you have to relax and you have to do some of those things for balance. Mm -hmm. And for me, that means I've got to get into the gym. I've got mm -hmm. to go run. I've got to go play soccer. I've got to go lift some weights. That's my release. Mm -hmm. I don't really enjoy spending three hours on the couch watching television. I get antsy. I've, I've got a little bit of ADD. Yeah, yeah. And so I Welcome can't... To the club. Right, right. And so it doesn't, it doesn't, like, you could tell me like three shows and I probably don't even, I've yeah. never even heard of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Small Business so Big Marketing Show, uh, The Small Business Big Marketing Show and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I meant television shows. Oh, right, on. right. Mate, that's great. Right. I mean, I think, again, listener, listeners, you, we've got to make marketing a hobby. We have to, we have to want to do it. Again, because, you know, how many small business owners do you come across that either, you know, when you ask them, you know, what marketing do you do? They say, oh, not much or none. Well, they do because, you know, even having a business card is marketing. But you've got to get to that point where you love it. Was it always like that for you, Nick? Or did you actually do something in your marketing that gave you a bit of an aha moment? I don't know if it was always like that. I just know that I've always been interested in it. Mm. I grew up with a dad who ran his own business. He was ah. a manufacturer's rep. Yeah. Then my father-in-law ran a car wash back in Chicago and was super successful. But neither one of those guys had to do, you know, the tr like not even traditional marketing, but mm -hmm. even the marketing kind of stuff that we do. It, I never saw any of that. But as I, as I grew up and as I was exposed to a lot of different kinds of business owners, mm. and that's one of the great things about what I do is I get to meet so many different people and I get to meet a lot of people that own businesses. And so always I'm like, oh, well, how do you, you know, how do you do that? And so yeah. we always get into that conversation and it's almost a sickness for me. Like I can't <laughs> help myself. I want to talk. I was interviewing. So literally before we got on this call, I was interviewing a guy to come work for me yeah. and he's a struggling small business owner. Right. He owns a workout place where they do Zumba and stuff like that. Oh, yep. And he's, you know, so of course I'm asking, well, you know, why, well, how do you get customers and what, what do you do? And, you know, he's, you know, we're going into that whole thing. And so that I started telling him about Facebook and I, you know, I pull out my Facebook feed and I show him what we're doing. He's like, you know, I don't think Facebook's worth anything. I think it's, uh, <laughs> you know, you really can't even get business out of it. And wow. I go, well, you know, wow. I, you know, I got $287,000 worth of business out of Facebook from last year alone. Yeah. I, I think it's a pretty, pretty darn powerful. So did he react, just a what, what was me. his reaction to that? Oh yeah, but he was like, "What?" Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The marketing world has changed, my friend. 
Absolutely. You know, as you and I both know, there's never been a better time to market a business. Uh, you know, you think about your grandfather's car wash business, you think about your dad's um, business and like the opportunities that they had just, you know, were uh, they could have done some funky stuff with their marketing, but gee, compared to what we can do today, I reckon it's mind-blowing. So let's talk then about... I'm going to get you to share three things that are working for Walls by Design in from a marketing perspective, either right now or a couple of years ago, where you have just gone, wow, that was effective. Start first one. What do you got? Well, the first one is definitely Facebook. I just I just mentioned it. And last year, and this started at the beginning of the year, I started playing around with Facebook. And everybody talks about Facebook. Everyone talks social media in general Mm. about how you got to be on it. You got to do all this stuff. And I just looked at it and I was like, it's a freaking waste of time. Like, (laughs) I can't stand it. Like, it's just a big time suck. And So are you looking at that from a a user's point of view or an advertiser's point of view? Probably a user's. From a business owner's point of view, I'm seeing so many small business owners talk about how do we use Twitter and Facebook and, you know, you got to do so many posts and you got to do all the stuff. And I was just like, it doesn't work. No. Right? So I said, well, there's got to be something to this. And so I'd gotten an ad on Facebook probably and it was talking about working with one of their one of their people in Facebook. It wasn't mm-hmm. like another company or anything. And so they said, if you spent a certain dollar amount, and let's say it wasn't much, it was like a minimum spend of, let's say it was $50 a week. Yep. And so I'm like, okay, I'm in for 200 bucks. But then they said, if you, do, if you commit to that, then we will work with you. We'll put you with one of our, our associates mm-hmm. and they will basically teach you how to use Facebook. And I was like, okay, bring it on. That's pretty much a win-win. Yep. So, so I signed up for that. And in the meantime, you know, cause I get impatient a little Mm -hmm. bit too. I do. I just started playing with it and I started doing boosting and I started doing some things in about a month's time, maybe two months time. I started booking some projects and I'll never forget. I went in, it was one morning, my wife was getting ready in the morning and I walked into the, into into the bathroom. And I said, you know, honey, I think there's something to this Facebook stuff because I booked $10,000 worth of business last month. And I think I spent maybe, maybe a thousand dollars. Nice. And she's like, well, do you think if you spent more money, you would get more business? Mm -hmm. And so I thought, let's give it a go. Mm -hmm. So I just slowly increased and increased. And uh, fast forward, I'm going to give you kind of the nuts and bolts of what last year proved. And I think I said it Mm -hmm. $287,000 $287,000 proved. $287,000. It was a, it ended with the money that we spent. It was a 12 times return on dollars. Wow. The best month I had was December. Yeah. And I had $50,000 worth of business. Nick, it's a great story. What was the, you got to give us, a, what's the secret sauce? I'm sure there's many components to it, but what made Facebook deliver so well? Okay. There's a couple of components and you're going to hate a few of them. <laughs> Because all marketing guys say the same thing, yeah. and they're like, you've got to have a good headline, headline right? Yeah. You've got to have a good call to action. You've got to have a good image. And you've got to have a, well, a good image, and yeah. then you've got to you know, lead them to how they're they, how they going to contact you, right? Yep, yep. Okay, so those are kind of the basics of, of advertising, okay, right? Okay, so, so we know the component parts. How did you get to the point of deciding? Well, here's what- the thing. I didn't do any of that. They did. I ignored all of that. Ah, you were so creative. So it wasn't a professional photo. There wasn't a headline. There wasn't a call to action. I didn't even tell him how to call me. What I would do, Tim, was I would post a picture, and I think I just sent you a, a, an example of mm-hmm. one. Um, I would post a picture, and it could be something we haven't even painted yet. It could be something we were in the middle of painting, or it could be something that we just finished, but we have even cleaned it up. Yeah, right. I would write something like, this one turned out sweet. That's it? Okay. So those were the kinds of posts that I, I, would, I wouldn't tell them how to contact me. Mm-hmm. But over time, what would happen is they would start to engage. People would ask questions. And I always have my phone, so I would always engage back in the conversation. Mm-hmm. I would answer questions. I would 
tell them how to contact me. Oh, you want to get an estimate? Oh, here's our phone number. We'd love to come out and do an estimate. But it wasn't pushy from the beginning. It was just like if I was doing a post on my Facebook page and I showed a picture of my kids and he did something awesome in gymnastics, I'd be like, sweet, we just got first place. Yeah, right. You know, super simple. Yeah, nice. But I would do it very consistently. And so we would get a little bit of engagement just on the posts. And then I would take one of the posts that would get a little bit more engagement than others and I would do a boost. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what a boost is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, where you put more money behind the post. And I think there's a learning there, which is when someone something does get traction, when you do go, well, hang on, more people than normal are starting to comment on this. It's worth putting some money behind it so Facebook gets it in front of more people. In, in the early days, it, it didn't take much. It would maybe be one comment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, right. I mean, I had like <laughs> 300 people that liked my page in the beginning. Like, yeah. it was nothing. Like, I had no, like, I didn't start with like 5,000 followers or anything like that. I yeah. just, we just started. That's cool. And, and so then I would boost the post. Uh, people would engage that way. But the magic starts to happen. It doesn't start right away, it's mm-hmm. a long term play. So, what would end up happening is somebody would have liked a picture that I posted. Mm-hmm. And then later I would have another boost that would show up in Sally's feed and she would see that her friend Julie liked it. And so she would assume that Julie has worked with me. Yeah, right. So I would be showing up to a, a house, Tim, to do an estimate and I, she would meet me at the door and she'd go, Nick, <laughs> I've, been, I've been stalking you on Facebook. And I'd be like... <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah, yeah. I want to know, right? Yeah. And so she'd be like, well, you know Julie, right? And I'd be like, uh, yeah, uh, sort of. I don't know. And she'd be like, oh, well, she must have done work with you. And she likes all your stuff. And she just thought that it was like a testimonial. Yep. And so that just started to happen. And I would hear it over and over and over. And literally, I'm in the paint store. Uh, middle of last year. And this lady comes up to me and she goes, you're Nick May. And I'm like, um, no, nice. yep. <laughs> and she goes, I've been, I've been stalking you on Facebook. <laughs> and so, but what I feel like some of the, some of the components to it is I started in a very small geographic area. Yeah. I started with like three cities. Mm-hmm. They're all, you know, close together. When, bo- when boosting your posts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. And I would start to get traction there. Mm-hmm. And so then I started to not only get comments and people asking, hey, could you come out and give me an estimate? But then I was also starting to get people to like my page. And so now, a year later, we've got almost 3,000 people that like my my page. And, and so it- now I can do a boost. And instead of targeting people where the dollars are a little bit higher, now I can just target the people that have liked my page. They've They've kind of stuck their hand up and go, yeah, I'm interested in painting. Does that make sense? Nick, just to wrap up that to wrap up that Facebook idea, it's a big one. Uh, Twelve times your investment is a good return. Um, you, you're not you're not typically following great headline, great image, great call to action, great couple of lines of copy. You are just sharing things like. Um, a photo of a kitchen that's come up beautifully uh, and saying, hey, you know, looking good or, you know, nearly finished and just engaging people. When someone makes a comment, when you get a little bit of engagement, you boost that post with, what, $10, $20, $30 in um, a very small geographical area. Is that a fair summation? Yeah, and that's where I started. And so now I do, you know, a boost yeah. of like 200 Yeah, 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 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. Well, if you're getting 12 times, you just need to find lots of $200 notes. That's right. <laughs> hey, listeners, I'm chatting with Walls by Design owner Nick May. Before we chat about the other two things that are absolutely rocking his marketing world, here's a word from a couple of businesses that want to rock your world. Support for this show comes from Net Registry, a one stop shop for getting your online marketing sorted. Verity Ma, their chief marketing officer, recently told me this story of a very happy mechanic. So one of my favourite stories of customers that I heard was a salesperson was talking to a mechanic and he was talking about what sort of email he would like to have and what kind of hosting, whether he wants cloud or cPanel hosting. And the mechanic just said, look, 
I don't care, build my website, here's my phone number, make my phone ring and send me the bill. And that was the last we heard of him. He didn't provide us content. He didn't provide us any details about his business. We had his contact details. We wrote all the content and we just got his phone ringing and sent him the bill. Net Registry, where happy mechanics go to grow their business online. Visit netregistry.com.au or give them a buzz on 1300 638 734 and tell them Timbo sent you. This episode is also made possible by Audible, who's offering you a free audiobook of your choice right now. You know what I'm listening to? No, no, not Fifty Shades of Grey. Be more like Fifty Sheds of Grey if I was listening to a book like that. I'm listening to Huckleberry Finn. Huck Finn. I absolutely love it. Head over to audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM and choose a free one from 180,000 titles. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM and get started today. Now, Nick, number two, mate, what's the number two thing that is absolutely exponentially growing your business from a marketing perspective? Well, right now, we're actually getting some great traction with direct mail. Do you mean offline? Yeah. Putting, putting things in letterboxes? Yep. I love it. I love talking old school. So what do we got? What do we? What do we got? An, an A4? Oh, you don't do A4 over there. You have weird sizes. Maybe we have weird sizes. What are you putting in letterboxes? Super small postcard size. Nice. Very simple. What's it say? But here's the key. It's very targeted. Mm-hmm. We we built a great list, and it has a great offer. Okay, let's talk about the list and then the offer. How have you built? How, how do you target it? Are you going to only letterboxes that you know? Oh, you're, po- you're, you're mailing, yeah? You're actually posting. Mailing. You're not walking yep. the streets. Nope. Okay. No, we built it with uh, homeowners in the same three. We, we first started again, mm-hmm. same thing I did with Facebook. We started in three cities and we did home values between four hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars and $800,000. And so that was our target market. We knew that that was the price point that we needed to be in. Uh, we did two mailings uh, to start off and do a test, and now we're we've done two other areas. Um, I don't know the exact uh, turnaround on on what our uh, on our ROI has been on that, but I do know for the month of March we've gotten sixteen uh, leads off of the postcards that we that we sent out mm-hmm. uh, last month and this month. How many converted into a sale? Um, we convert about thirty three percent. It's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Just to be clear, this is the number two thing that's working best for your business because we've gone from Facebook that's delivering 12 times Mm -hmm. to a direct marketing campaign that's delivering a 33%. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't sneeze at 33%, but, you know, you're you're pretty happy with it. Well, 33% isn't the the ROI. 33% is the... um, the closing ratio on 16 leads. Yeah, okay. So the ROI on it is probably right around 45%. Who do you use to put the list together? Uh, we Not too specifically, but like have you got a VA or is it something that you've done? No, we have a company that does our entire uh, marketing campaign. They build the list, they design the card, then they mail it out. Okay. All right. So uh, message is everything. What's the, what's the card say that's so compelling? Well... We really focus on cabinet painting for this postcard Mm -hmm. and um, painted cabinets is really the the strong headline, I guess, on Mm -hmm. it. And we offer a free master bathroom cabinets with a kitchen. Nice. So it's up to, you know, it's like an $800 value for some houses. Okay. Uh, Not $800 cost to you, but an $800 value to... Here, okay. Right. Nice. Yeah, and then we put a limit on it, how many doors and drawers, you know, so yep. we, we're not going to lose our shirts ever. It's just a really good value. Mm-hmm. How'd you come up with that? Was that something that you kind of, did you play with that? Just split test a few different offers or no? No, I think I might have done a test. No, I don't think I did test. Okay. I, I think I thought about testing it on Facebook, but I never did. And you just got it right the first time. Mm-hmm. Love a bit of old school marketing. What's the third thing that's working for you? 
Well, I would say the third thing that's really helping my business from an overall perspective with marketing has been actually podcasting. I started a podcast, Tim. Did Uh, you know this? The old podcasting. Mate, I did. I did. What a great name. The Chase Lounge. I think you might have had a little bit to do with that name. I don't want to talk about it, but now that you've raised it. uh, Only because I'm in the forum. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. It's a great name and it's a great podcast. What I love about it is that this is really interesting, listeners. So Nick has gone, like many would go, but what would a painter, which essentially is what, what Nick is and what his business does, he paints people's houses, what could they possibly podcast about? I get this all the time, you know, with content creation generally, Nick, where people go, oh, yeah, but I sell insurance. What would I podcast about? Or, you know, I do this. I'm an accountant. What could I blog about? It's such a – well, it's not a flawed question, but it's limiting It's limiting thinking. So what's the Chase Lounge? Who's it for and what's it about? So I, on the show, I interview successful interior designers from across the country. Ah, this is clever. And, in, and in, why do you interview interior designers? Well, we talk about the business of interior yes, design. Yes, but why have you chosen interior designers? Oh, a leading question, clearly because they give you work as a they, painter. They give us work, exactly. Uh-huh. And so we want to be in front of the interior designers. And, and to be honest, it has really elevated me in the, not just into Denver as far as elevated my, my stature, but mm-hmm. I, has elevated my stature across the whole country and in the interior design space. So now I'm actually, on Thursday, Tim, I go down to Dallas and I'll be on a panel uh, to speak on branding, how to build a successful brand because of the Chaise Lounge. Unreal. Unreal. This is exciting stuff. This is all of a sudden, you know, where you start, to, this is the boomerang effect in ac- action, essentially, where you, w- what you put into your marketing, you get back in multiples, you know. Um, okay. So um, that's an exciting thing that you're doing this week. But I understand you attended a conference recently, again, as a result of you being now a podcaster, you attended the Design Bloggers Conference? Yeah, and that one is in Atlanta. They're in their like eighth year or something, mm-hmm. and it is it is well known. It is uh, in the interior design space. Everybody knows about it. And I was asked to actually podcast at the event during the event, and so I, I think we released about three different episodes, and I interviewed people that spoke and people that attended, and it was fantastic because I got to meet all these different people yep. that I would not have had the opportunity to speak with. Mate, that is unreal. So did you actually get asked to speak, uh, to podcast at that bloggers conference um, as a result of your podcast? Did someone at the conference find out about you? And Yeah, I actually, it was a little bit strategic. Yeah. Before I went, uh, I'd heard about the, the, the event and so I reached out to the organizer of the event, which I would have never had mm-hmm. the, op- I mean, why would I talk to that guy mm-hmm. if I hadn't? didn't have a podcast. So I I invited him on my podcast. He had a great time, (laughs) almost had an opportunity to speak up in front of everybody, but it was just kind of too late in the game. But then he said, Hey, why don't you come and podcast and interview people? So they gave me a free booth and it was just fantastic. Unreal. So this is what, you know, I drive at home time and time again. And I know for many listeners, it it finally lands. For others, they're still going, I wouldn't know what to do. But when we go and create content that is so unbelievably helpful, and the Chase Lounge is unbelievably helpful for interior designers who want to grow a better business, then you, the creator of that content, Nick, your business and your personal brand can only benefit. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, everything is elevated. And and I'm guessing, and I don't know this, so it's not a leading question, I'm guessing that when you started the Chase Lounge, there was sort of a, there was a a few weeks, maybe months of like, oh, is anyone listening? Is this worth it? Could I be better spending my time watching Game of Thrones, you know, until was there a moment where where it all kicked in? You know, I I probably almost quit like eight times just thinking... Nobody's out there, you know, maybe one or two people, the same people are responding to me. And then probably in about the eighth month, I looked up and I was like, holy cow, people are talking about me. We, month. There's a magazine here in the States called Interior Design Magazine. Like it's one of the big ones, right? Mm-hmm. Well, they named me one of the top five podcasts in all of interior design to listen to. <laughs> And then I looked at, and then I actually looked at the list, and I really was the only interior design 
podcast on the list. They were all, all the other ones were architecture. So. Yeah, right. So that was really number one. Unreal. See, this, and what the big th- lesson there is eight months. That's a long period of time because there'd be many business owners going, what, you, now you're suggesting that I go and create some content in the hope possibly eight, I, I, I normally say six months. Don't look at the scoreboard for six months. Eight months you persevered. Um, you nearly gave, you gave up, nearly gave up eight times. What, what kept you going? You like the sound of your own voice? You know, the encouragement <laughs> of some folks that were close to me. Yep. Just reminding me that the content was great. Yep. That I needed to not be, um, you know, I, I needed to lighten up and, and just keep going yep. because it was right around the corner and it really was. And so I just kept doing it. Good on you. Well, and would it be fair to say that it wasn't as hard as maybe it felt before you embarked on a podcasting strategy? Or was it was it particularly hard? <laughs> well, as you know, I had another podcast, so I, it wasn't yeah. like I was starting from zero. So yeah. I had a, another podcast before, and so I... I what I was that what about? Remind me. <laughs> that one was called Small Business Naked. <laughs> We had Tim on the show a couple of times. It's a great show. Which was awesome. Yeah. Sitting around nude with a couple of other blokes. Kind of weird. That's but, right. you know, that's what we do as long as we're talking yep. business. It was fun. Yeah. So, so, you- so that took some of the, you know, the hardness because I knew what it took. Hmm. Um, and it's just being impatient. I think we're all impatient with yeah. everything that we do, especially in our marketing. We want instant results. You yep. know, we live in a time where everything is almost instantaneous. You know, I can hmm. go on Amazon and have you know, something delivered to my house tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're used to. And so you've got to be patient. So, mate, um, well done on launching a podcast. I don't think there'd be too many painters across America with podcasts. Uh, no, there are not. There are not. Uh, I don't think there are any painters, actually. I've thought of doing a painter one, but I, was, I don't know why I would do that because I don't want to make money doing that. But maybe someday. You thought of doing what? A painter? Yeah, like a painting business podcast. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. So like train the trainer type stuff. Hey, other sure. painters, here's how to do it. Well, you, you're setting yourself up to do that. But And I see others do that. And often I think, why would you do that right now when it, it might be a bit of a semi-retirement strategy for you, you know? Right. You've lost a fair bit of hair already, but when it goes grey, what you have... <laughs> oh, I love it. Love I may it. have to go silent on you after that oh, one. Oh, don't, hey. Come on, precious. What's the one, before we wrap up, mate, what's the one, uh, given that marketing is a hobby for you, you're constantly trying things, what's one marketing initiative that you've tried going, this is going to be unbelievably good and it's been a complete flop? That silence, listeners, is Nick's thinking, okay? So I'll just... I don't know if I've... It's been a long time since I've tried some... I mean, I've, I've... I've gone down the path a few times of doing something and then not really followed through with it. Yep. Um, out of just doing a lot of different things. As yeah, right. you know, Tim, yeah, I yeah. try a lot of things. You do. But that's great. And we yeah. can these days because often the downside is very low. You know, we can, um, we can try things thanks to outsourcing, thanks to some of these websites where we can get things done at a fairly, you know, small cost. That's exciting. So nothing really stands out as being a complete you know, flop. I did think of one. Yeah. One that I did a long time ago. We did a, and you're going to love this, yeah. I did a radio campaign oh. once a long time ago. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was pretty much a dismal failure. Um, I, th- I have not given up on that idea, mm-hmm. but I have come to learn because of speaking to other people that have done it successfully, it's just very expensive. Yeah. Well, we've had this conversation in the forum and, and I, I actually love radio. I love the audio medium, whether it be right. podcasting or radio or whatever it is. And I have seen radio for certain businesses work unbelievably well, where they do talk about, you know, um, ROIs of 12 times, 14 times, 20 times. But as we talked about in the forum and briefly here, 
there are so many variables to get right with radio. And if you get it wrong, like, you know, what show does it appear on? How long should the ad be? Should it be, you know, should I have music, a voiceover, a female or a male voiceover? You know, how many times do I run it each week? So many variables. And if you don't get that right, it can become a bottomless pit. But if you get it right, radio can be amazing. Yeah. It can really help you dominate. You really have to have the the presence. You know, for me here in Denver, Denver's a it's a pretty big city. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not like a New York or a Chicago, mm. but it's pretty large. And for me to be able to cover the whole entire metro area, we have to be bigger. So it doesn't even make sense from a money standpoint to do that until we can um, logistically cover the area. Yep. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. And then you will be walking down the street and people are going, is that, is that Nick? That's Nick May from Walls by Design. Unreal. I didn't expect him to look like that. <laughs> I thought he'd have more hair. <laughs> oh, I make myself laugh. Is that just because the shine on my, uh, uh, my forehead today? What, what listeners don't know, Nick, is that we have, we, we're Skype videoing so we can actually see each other. So, uh, you know, got to be careful of that. Got to be, well, got to be. There's a, a, there's a, platform called um periscope that yes tim you should check out because then people can see us yeah well yeah yeah fraught with danger periscope but i hear you we will check that out one day hey nico um mate thank you for sharing those three insights into what marketing is working for your business and thank you for making marketing a hobby because i get excited when i talk to business owners like you that genuinely see the power of marketing and respect it and try new things and never give up and and enjoy the process how how can how can people find you wallsbydesign.com you on twitter um no love it i'm on facebook yeah, how? What's the? What is it? Okay, let me guess. Facebook.com forward slash walls by design. You got it, buddy. Clever. That would be the best. Hey, but I, before you you closed your show, yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to thank you because one of the things we didn't you didn't give me the opportunity to tell people is a lot of what I'm doing in marketing has been as a direct result of listening to your show and being in the forum, and lots of ideas have come out of of. Uh, being a part of the show and listening to you and being in the forum. And if people are listening right now and they're wondering, I got to tell you, get in the forum and you can ask any marketing question. And there's a ton of people in there every single day that are going to give insight and feedback. And uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I've been so successful over the last two years. Oh, I really appreciate that, buddy, and I appreciate now this is becoming a bit of a love fest, but, hey, let's just go for it. There's no one <laughs> listening right. anymore, just two blokes patting each other on the back. But, uh, you know, again, uh, you, you get what you give. Uh, you give what you get. Is it? You get what you give. And your contributions inside the forum and the discussions that we have are fantastic. And, you know, again, I think you're, you're the sum part of the people you kind of hang around. And when you're hanging around motivated business owners, you can only sort of, you can almost be guaranteed that you're going to do better things than if you weren't. Absolutely. So uh, thanks, buddy. Love your thanks, work. Thanks, Timbo. Well, there you go, team. Nick May, wallsbydesign.com or hit him up on Facebook, Walls by Design. What a great fella. Really good bloke. My top three attention grabbers, thanks to Net Registry and Audible, from that little fireside chat with Nico. Number one, if you want to make your marketing fly, then watch less telly. TV. <laughs> telly. That's such an Aussie thing. You know, watch an hour less a night and put that hour into your marketing, into marketing that you love. And if you don't love your marketing, read my book. The Boomerang Effect, over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. You'll love it then. Attention grabber number two, persevere. Oh, yeah, hashtag persevere. It took Nick eight months to see a return from his podcasting, but now it's paying off in spades in ways he never imagined. It's that great saying, you know, um, the man who planted a seed yesterday is sitting under a tree today. Some of this marketing doesn't happen overnight. I know we want it to. I get that. But you've got to persevere. Don't look at the scoreboard and just be helpful. That's what I do. That's what I say in the book, The Boomerang Effect. Be helpful and it'll return customers and sales in spades. 
Attention grabber number three, don't think all your marketing answers are online. And don't think they're offline either. Mix it up. Enjoy the mixing of the old school ways and the new school ways, and that will result in a really effective marketing plan and strategy to get your business moving forward into the long term. They're my top three attention grabbers from a chat with Nick. What were yours? Love to know. Love. Did you like the interview? Did it annoy you? What did you think of a soapbox thing about outsourcing before? Anything. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 309 and tell me how you feel. Marketing doyen Philip Kotler once said, Marketing is not the art of finding clever ways to dispose of what you make. No, it is the art of creating genuine customer value. All righto, that was a big episode, I'd have to say, wouldn't you? Lots of marketing gold, I hope, for you, and there is plenty more coming your way in the weeks ahead. Next episode, you will hear from a fellow who runs a business that helps ex-crims get jobs. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Fully online business and uh, a nice little profitable business. Not massive profit, but enough to uh, keep the wolf from the door, if you know what I'm saying. And I promise not to get on my outsourcing high oils next week, all right? Hey, thanks to my local editor. He's in Melbourne. Yeah, Daryl Misson for putting up with me. Thanks, Daz. And to musical maestro Lockie Dolly for the tunes. You can check Lockie out at lockiedoly.com. Hey, if you want to surround yourself with other motivated business owners, I would probably join the Small Business Big Marketing Club over at crankmymarketing.com. Membership includes forum access... You get invites to some pretty damn good training webinars. And all in all, we sort of help grow each other's businesses, me and the members. Plus, it comes with a 30-day no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. Where's the risk? Hey, if you need a speaker for an upcoming event, timreed.com.au. Big hugs to Net Registry and Audible for making this show possible. Love you guys. Be sure to use Net Registry if you need a website or to get yours found. If you want a free audio book, including Huckleberry Finn, I'm going to go and read that now. Head over to audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. <laughs> Until next week, I'm Timbo Reed. Always have been. Always will be. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now. Bye for now.